when I told my wife, Brenda, I didn't know how to start this speech. She looked at me and said, I don't think starting this speech is going to be your problem. <laughs> By now, all of us know how important knocks and telephone calls could be to a football player. For me, I experienced them both, the knocks and the phone call. To this day, one of the knocks that still sticks in my mind is that man right there knocking on the bathroom door. Boys, y'all been in that tub too long. <laughs> the funny thing is, my mother, Olame, had only made about an inch of bath tide water for both me and my brothers, Vic and Joe to use. I'm joking, because my home was nothing but love and support. In fact, my first coach was my mother, Olame. But, but it was her brother, Odell Randa, that kept after my parents. Y'all better let that boy play ball. Back then, everyone thought it was funny when they saw my homemade jersey. I used my dad's black electrical tape to make a big number 63 or a 51 on an old t-shirt so I could be Willie the Neal or Dick Buckus. I should say, everyone but my dad thought it was funny because he could never find that tape. <laughs> I'll bet you, right about now, my kids are all probably saying, oh no, which phone call he's gonna tell everybody about? Well, let's see. No, I just want to tell all of them that I'm so glad that you trusted me enough to call me for anything. So, Cherie, Katrinda, Trey, Deanna, your husband Matt, and Blaine, Nathan, your wife Malena, and my grandson Daniel, Lindsay, your husband Andres and my two granddaughters never stop calling me because I love you all so much. <laughs> One of the best telephone calls I ever got was when I was at Jackson State in Mississippi. At that time, Walter Payton was bringing scouts all over to our practice. This turned out to be great for Walter and me because we was making history. Two first round draft picks from a historical black college and university. And off of that same team, telephone calls came to Ricky Young, John Tate, Vernon Perry, Hall of Famer Jackie Slater, Leon Gray, Rodney Phillips, Walter's brother Eddie, Emmanuel Zaylinus, and Don Reese all got phone calls that we'll be playing in the NFL. The 75 draft phone call was also important because it brought me in contact with Bud Adams and his family. It gave me a second father in Bond Phillips. Bond's philosophy in life and the football was, every man get a man, and every man get, you're right, too. The draft phone call gave me great assistant coaches and teammates that became my brother. The draft phone call gave me John McClain, whose campaign to get me here today would never, never be forgotten by me nor my family. In 1985, the Houston Oilers was right here in Canton. We were to play the New York Giants in the Hall of Fame game. But after 10 Ironman seasons, never missing a game 
and starting every game, I got that knock on the door. It was an assistant coach telling me that the head coach wanted to see me. This would be one of the most difficult knocks that I would ever hear in my life. The head coach told me that I was not going to start. They had decided to go with the younger ball players, the ones I had mentored that whole summer. This knock described me. I fell out of love with football for the first time in my life. This knock sent me and my son, Trey, back to Whistler, Alabama, where my family, my community, and my church welcomed me home. Soon after I came home, I started working at my alma mater, Viger High School in Pritchard, Alabama. At Viger, there were some other great legends that once walked the hall. We have all played for the Viger Wolves. Paul Crane with the New York Jets. Scott Hunter with the Green Bay Packers. Don Reese with the Miami Dolphins and Ricky Young with the Minnesota Vikings. All of us from the same high school. And it's important to mention that over the next 20 years, more than a dozen young athletes from Viger will get their phone call telling them that they will be playing in the NFL. That's why people from Mobile say, there's gotta be something in that water down there. <laughs> After coming home, it will be phone calls from people like Vaughn, Debbie Phillips, Amy Adam Scrubs, Eddie Biles, my quarterback, Dan Passerini, Colleen, Rob Lynch, Billy, White Shoes Johnson, Greg Beagham, Dwayne Benson, my man, Vernon Perry, and other teammates that will bring back this love I once had for football. You see, all of these phone calls was important because they kept the Love Your Blue family together. Back in August, when the phone call came from Dave Baker, the senior Hall of Fame committee, and a few Hall of Famers, I began to hope and pray that football might be ready to love me back. So, Mr. Hall of Famer Kenny Houston, Earl Cameron, Evan Bethay, Curly Cup, Mike Check, Jackie Slater, Lim Bunny, Juan Moon, Ricky Jackson, my man Lawrence Taylor, and my class of 2018 Pro Football Hall of Fame. When they knocked on my door, all of my dreams came true. And after all these years, I'm at home!